West Coast Avengers debuted in 1984, founded by Hawkeye to expand the Avengers' influence. He recruits his wife Mockingbird, Wonder Man, Tigra and Iron Man, who was actually Rhodey at the time. Later, Tony does join in in his Silver Centurion armor and Hank Pym gets on board as an advisor. Later, they add other full-time members including Scarlet Witch and Vision, who is destroyed and rebuilt as the emotionless White Vision. So let's take a look at the Marvel Legends Amazon exclusive West West Coast Avengers box set and see who we can add to the collection. Ciao and welcome back to the channel Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember now you can hit that join button. I'm going to become a channel member as well. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. Today, we are taking a look at the Marvel Legends Amazon exclusive West Coast Avengers box set, which includes five members of the team. Now, is it a complete team in a box? Not quite, but they have all been a part of the West Coast Avengers at some point or another. This box set actually includes characters we need to complete the original lineup, so we will get into all of that. But first things first, these exclusive box sets do always have very nice packaging. It is the best example of plastic-free packaging, and the box art is actually a recreation creation of West Coast Avengers number one from 1985 but what they've done is replace a couple of the characters on the front to match what's actually in the box so they've replaced Hawkeye with Hank Pym and they've replaced Wonder Man with Julia Carpenter Spider Woman they've even replaced them up in the corner as well but it is still a nice recreation a tribute if you will to that first issue when it really got off the ground after that mini series so there's the front of the packaging really really nice on one side you actually have like characters, uh, digital renders, and then on the other side you've got comic images. So that's a nice touch, but my review table is far too small to show you them. And then on the back of the box you get all of the figures in the set and what accessories they come with. Very lackluster, but they do all at least come with something, even if it is just a set of interchangeable hands. So no doubts, there is a lot of reuse in this set. So of course, in today's video, we will do some straight up side-by-side -side comparisons and see, are these actually upgrades or is it not worth your time? Let's find out and crack it open. Here we have all the figures out of the packaging with their accessories laid out on the table. And when you do that, it really doesn't look like a lot, does it? Especially considering these box sets ain't exactly cheap on Amazon. I would like to see more packed in here as only Tigra comes with an interchangeable head. And talking of Tigra, both her, Spider Woman and Silver Centurion are all character designs we have had recently in the Marvel Legends line. Tigra was on a card back, Spider Woman was in the Molten Man Builder figure wave and Silver Centurion was a Walgreens exclusive. Now are these upgrades? Maybe we'll do a comparison in a minute and find out. But the main event of this set is, of course, Mockingbird and Hank Pym. And Mockingbird is that character I was alluding to earlier. She is the missing piece we needed in Marvel Legends form to complete the original lineup of the West Coast Avengers. Especially considering we're getting that new Hawkeye in the Sky Cycle, she's going to be a nice addition. And Hank Pym in the jumpsuit is a nice touch, especially during this West Coast Avengers era. I'm sure we're going to see that again. Again. So let's look at these individually one by one and let's start off with Mockingbird. So let's focus on Bobby then, definitely the most desired in this set for me. Here she is on the table with her unique accessories, an interchangeable set of gripping hands so she can hold her weapons, the long staff and then the batons as well. Overall they've done a great job of recreating that classic Mockingbird character design into plastic here with the West Coast Avengers era where she's showing a lot more leg. There are other iterations of this costume where she's wearing the long tights and the white boots but this is accurate to her West Coast Avengers look even down to like the sort of cuffs on her wrists. What isn't quite right is the sleeves. Now she's known for having big flamboyant sleeves and the figure doesn't really represent that very well. So we will take a closer look at that in a minute. But just front on, aesthetically, she's completely pinless and she undoubtedly still looks like the character design. So I'm happy to get her in the collection. Let me move them out of the way. Let's get the tape measure out. She comes up to about six and a quarter inches to the top of her hair. So she's going to scale beautifully 
beautifully. Let's take a closer look. I think they've done a great job with the head sculpt here. Now her mask is a separate piece glued onto the face, but you can still see some pretty blue eyes painted under there in the digital face printing tech. Really nice with the subtle lips as well. My one gripe with the hair is that it's stuck in an action pose. If we only get one head sculpt with a figure, it should really be a neutral look unless they're gonna give us options. So she's stuck in a sort of swinging hair position, but it is a unique sculpt and it has got some wash in the blonde hair. So it's like a dirty blonde. So it is nice. And again, the mask is a separate piece glued onto the face, but it isn't going anywhere. So it does look really nice. So does the costume design in general. Now, remember, this is the West Coast Avengers. The weather's hotter over in California than it is in New York. So she's showing a little bit more leg uh, with the blue cowboy boots, but she is completely pinless. Uh, and double jointed uh, on the legs. My criticism is the sleeves. Now, uh, a trait of her character design during this era is her big flamboyant sleeves, and these are neither big or flamboyant. They are literally just pointy. Like the shoulders will go up, and then she's got a single jointed elbow that goes to 90. But as I said, pointy elbows, not big and flamboyant. Now, considering. Lady Deathstrike came out not too long ago and she actually has the big flamboyant sleeves. I don't understand why Marvel Legends didn't reuse these on Mockingbird. It would make a lot more sense and I do really think it would benefit the character design and be a lot more accurate to have these big puffy sleeves in blue on Mockingbird rather than the pointy sleeves. So yeah, I, they missed the mark on that one. I don't understand the character design choice, especially when this piece is already in the library. So maybe you should mod it, but we really shouldn't have to. But ignoring that, I still think she looks good and is still a solid representation of the character. It's just not quite perfect. So the single jointed elbows, that they are pinless. And aesthetically, apart from those holes that are unnecessarily in her back, she does look really good. So out of the box, she comes with one fisted hand and one karate chop hand, or it could be a waving hand, I suppose. Hello. And then she has a set of gripping hands so she can hold her weapons. So here she is holding her sort of batons, these billy clubs, if you will. Uh, these are done in like a, a sort of gunmetal gray. And uh, she looks really nice holding them, to be fair. Really, really good. And I do think they attach to each other as well. Let's try this on camera. Uh, and yeah, they do. So you can make one sort of longer mini club if you want, but there's no need to do that as she also comes with the big long staff. And that's a better look of her holding the staff. So you can see that it's literally longer than she is, but pose her up just right. She's gonna look really, really good. And here we have our Marvel Legends Mockingbird comparison. So we have classic versus modern. And to be fair, I do like both character designs, but there is no competition here. This new West Coast Avengers Mockingbird is just aesthetically the better Marvel Legend in general. It is just really, really nice. Here we have Mockingbird with her husband, Hawkeye. Now, unfortunately, I do not have the new Hawkeye yet, the one that came with the Sky Cycle, which I'm sure will pair up with this one a hell of a lot better than this version does. But until then, this is all I've got. And before we move on, I have to do this. So the year is 1984. It is the original West Coast Avengers four issue miniseries. This is your original lineup. You have Wonder Man, Mockingbird, Hawkeye, Tigra, and Iron Man, who was actually Rhodey under the mask. So that is your accurate team. Swap out that Hawkeye with the new one that came with the Sky Cycle, and you've got a really good accurate West Coast Avengers lineup. Next up, the second most desired figure in this set, at least for me, it is Hank Pym in the jumpsuit. Now he had been exiled from the Avengers and he was sent to advise the West Coast Avengers. So he didn't wear a costume. He sort of just looked after the compound and eventually did join the team properly. But this is an accurate look from that era. And his only accessories are a set of interchangeable hands. What would have made this perfect is they could have gave us like a tiny little wasp pack in as she did help uh, the West Coast Avengers on occasion and that would have just been a nice touch to add a wasp with a Hank Pym but a missed opportunity to pack in that tiny little wasp this is what we get and it is basically a lot of what we see on the Red School body with the same legs boots and arms but they have sort of retooled this at first I thought it was the same as Wonder Man but it's not it is generic but we are going to see this again in green undoubtedly for a sort of Savage Land Professor X it is just a matter of time isn't it uh, so let's get the tape measure out you can see he is just under six and a half inches tall. Let's take a closer look at Hank. No, not that Hank, this Hank. Sorry, get out of the way. Uh, it is a very nice head sculpt with the blonde hair. I believe it was Paul Hardin. It is really nicely sculpted all the same. You've got the sort of quiff dangling down the front. 
uh, and then it's just like a bland sort of stoic expression. But you've got the blue eyes and it's just a solid head sculpt. And I like that we get more unmasked heads for some of these popular characters. Like I'm sure we could pop this off and put it on some other Ant-Man bodies maybe. So you could have yourself an unhelmeted Ant-Man. So here it is looking really, really nice. There you go, all the way around. There is a little bit of wash in that hair as well to bring out some of the sculpted detail. And it's on a dumbbell as well. So you get a nice bit of range looking up, down, swivel, tilt, all of that good stuff. Uh, the boiler suit. Uh, again is different to Wonder Man it's just more generic uh, you've got the t-shirt underneath and then the crunch here at the front if I zoom out a little bit you can see not so much crunch at the front like that's literally all it does and uh, not so much back either so tiny maybe I could make that work a little bit more I just don't want to don't want to risk it uh, the arms and legs we've seen with Red Skull and other figures just the black boots lots of uh, sculpted wrinkles and creases but it does make him completely pinless so double jointed pinless knees double jointed pinless elbows so again aesthetically very pleasing uh, so if you've got the Red Skull figure or like the Dormammu or other characters that have wore this outfit then you know what to expect here uh, there is a swivel at the waist just above that bout limited on the crunch but other Otherwise, uh, I like what we see here. In regards to accessories, it is just hands, unfortunately. So you do get a set of open palm expressive hands, and then you get one fist and one trigger finger. For a quick comparison, here we have the most recent Ant-Man we got. Now, I believe that is meant to technically represent Scott Lang, but they did wear similar Ant-Man costumes, so I'm gonna try a head swap. And yes, that pops on the body, no problem at all, but it's a little bit disproportionate. I think the head's a little bit too big for this sort of skinnier body. But that Ant-Man helmet does fit on this body as well, so you can do a bit of swapping. Next up, we have my third most desired figure in this set, but if Rich M is listening, it was my first. She is no stranger to the channel. It is, of course, T. Grey, Tigra. And she actually comes with probably the most accessories if you include the interchangeable head, as no one else comes with another head. But the figure we have seen before, but is this an upgrade? So I'm not gonna do a full-on review of this one because there is a review up of the previous Tigra on the channel, but I will quickly discuss the differences as they are there. So let me just take them out of the way for a second and let me bring in this Tigra compared to the previous one and wow the promo images do not do you justice of how much difference there is between the orange deco. I'll put them on the rotating base so you can see for yourself. I'll just let them spin for a second while I ramble but there is a drastic color shift. It is definitely not as orange. She is no longer tangoed. She doesn't look like she's been eating Cheetos. She now looks more accurate to what you actually see on a comic book page when you think of Tigra. Her bikini is now uh, a more sort of darker blue black compared to the brown as well and it's just, uh, just a nicer color palette in general but aesthetically in regards to sculpt it is the same figure. She is completely pinless and she does have a couple of like fur patches all over over her. And it's crazy that we've all been speculating when would we get reuse of this body? It would be maybe Wolfsbane or, or Feral. But no, it, it's another Tigra. <laughs> Not that I'm mad at it. She does look really nice. But the biggest difference is the head sculpts. And I don't know about you, but I think this new head sculpt is amazing. Now, the face is actually the same sculpt as the previous one. They've just gave her updated hair. And obviously now the orange is a little bit more toned down. You can see the face better. And it just looks really, really nice. So I've been before we do a side by side, I just wanted to show you the hair is sweeping to one side. It's definitely a very much a red hair and then the shadows are just naturally created as the light hits it. But it doesn't look like there's any wash in there. Uh, but overall, it is just a brand new face sculpt. And comparing it to the previous one, as I said, I think the faces are the same. It's just the new hair and it just makes all the difference, honestly. You let me know in the comments if you think this new head sculpt on Tigra, including the new orange, is an improvement because I think it absolutely is. The other head sculpt is the exact same head and hair. It's just, again, the orange being toned down just makes it better in general. So again, new Tigra, absolutely an improvement. And then apart from fisted hands, she also has a set of claw hands. So uh, I guess technically Mockingbird has the most accessories, but I do think an interchangeable head trumps quite a lot. And then just one more time while they're both here, look at the difference between these two oranges. It is crazy how much better this new Tiger is in comparison. It's just much more comic accurate. Like that is the orange we've seen in the comics, not this Tango version. So uh, yeah, if you love Tiger as much as we do on this channel, then uh, I do think she is worthy of an upgrade, but do we upgrade Tigra in the Who Crew? Because I do think this bright orange one now has its charm. 
let me know. Next up, we have Julia Carpenter, Spider Woman. And at first I wasn't massively excited, but I didn't realize how much of an improvement this is compared to the other version. So she only comes with a set of interchangeable fisted hands you could barely see on the table. But let me move them out of the way and bring in the previous Julia Carpenter. And there you go, that is the difference. Let me throw them on the rotating base straight away so you can see what we've got going on here. So this new one is completely pinless and it isn't the Shriek body either, it's like a bigger female body. Uh, and also the head sculpt is a vast improvement to be more accurate to this era's version of Julia. So uh, yeah, to be fair, this new one is much more of an improvement than I first thought and is definitely worthy of upgrading in your collection. If you want a completely pinless, version of Spider-Woman, then you need this. Here's a closer look at the new head sculpt, which is much more accurate to this era. And you can see how big her head of hair is. It literally goes all the way down the back, but it is a new sculpt and it does have some wash in there to bring out some of the sculpted detail. But other than that, she's got her mask on with the big spider eyes and then she's got the bright red lips as well. But it is an improvement compared to the previous version. Now, for some reason, my previous one had Infotigo on her lips. That's why she's got that big black mark but you can see for yourself the hair tried to have shading in it but it just looks dirty and not in a good way and this new head sculpt is an improvement it's just cleaner and aesthetically better to look at and a quick look at the two of them closer up so you can see the improvements so the new julia has double jointed pinless elbows compared to just the single jointed elbows on the old one and then she also has the double jointed pinless knees so again it does make such a difference let's get these uh, elbows all the way bent so yeah look at that she can literally touch her face so no problem there and also the spider logo is just nicer as well uh, because the body is like a little bit thicker uh, so the spider logo is just a bit more predominant it's like it's just there it's just better uh, a bit more crisp and uh, yeah it's just brighter it's bolder I, I don't know what to tell you get it in hand compare it yourself and you can tell me and I can't tell if it's the shriek body or not now obviously both of these completely pinless double jointed and all that but for some reason Jessica just seems a little bit bigger like I don't know, like, is that my mind playing tricks on me? It's not great showing these off on a white background when both of these characters are black and white, but hopefully someone in the comments can help me out. Is Julia on the Shriek body or is there a change in there somewhere? I can tell you her only accessories are a set of fisted hands. So you get those open palm hands and some fisted hands. Unfortunately, no web effects or anything spider related. Maybe you can use the web effect that came on the previous Julia, but uh, it is a missed opportunity to give us something new. And finally, we have Iron Man. And yes, it is Tony Stark behind the mask in his silver centurion armor officially join the team he comes with a set of fisted hands and then some repulsor blasts that we have seen a thousand times before so let me move them out of the way get the tape measure out now this is the exact same figure that was the walgreens exclusive they have just changed the color slightly he is six and a half inches or just over six and a half let me bring in that one now this one was an exclusive so it didn't have a builder figure piece it came packed with accessories i'm sure you could use that on this guy but let me put them on the rotating base so you can see for yourself what are the differences? Let's play that game of spot the difference. The only thing I can see is that the white is silver and the silver is white. So the Walgreens exclusive is the silver chromed silver centurion and then the West Coast Avengers is the white pearl silver centurion. And also there's a little bit of blue on the sort of art reactor on the chest for the West Coast Avengers and it's plain on the previous one. Other than that, same sculpt, same articulation, even the red looks very similar. It's just the face plate and then the sort of under, under armor uh, is a different color. Anything else? And here we have the blue repulsor blast in the hands. Again, we've seen these lows. They work in the feet or in the hands. Absolutely fine. I think they represent his power set fine. I would like to see him try something different as we do have a thousand of these. But again, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, I do dislike this figure though, as it doesn't have the hinges in the wrist. So you can't hinge his wrist up and down. And also the neck is attached as one solid piece. So you can't really put an unmasked Tony Stark head on there. It just looks awkward because the neck is attached to the helmet so they're two minor gropes of this figure but otherwise it looks like the silver centurion and he'll look good on a hall of armor on the shelf and there's a look at his fisted hands even iron man can punch someone and then just for a quick comparison and a sense of scale here we have iron man compared to iron man iron man iron man iron man iron man and iron man Woo! and there we have it our marvel legends west coast avengers but like i said at the very start of this video which feels like four hours ago at this point so i do apologize this isn't the complete team this 
this is just an array of characters from West Coast Avengers. If you want to complete the team, you will need to add some other Marvel Legends in your collection. But luckily for us, there are plenty of them. So let me uh, zoom out and create some space on the table and go through this. So one of my favourite stories is Vision Quest. That was during West Coast Avengers. So that is where we got White Vision and Wanda had her twins and all of that stuff. So there's Wanda and Vision. They're a big part of West Coast Avengers straight in there. Of course, you need their fearless leader, which is Hawkeye. That's the old version, like I mentioned. Definitely get the new one on the Sky Cycle. That will fit in a lot nicer. Uh, another original member was Wonder Man himself, but that was the look he was wearing during the four-part miniseries. During the actual run, he went back to a look very similar to this, but we do need a new version of that. He also wore his green outfit quite a lot as well. Another full-time member at some point was also Moon Knight. He joined along with Firestar, but we don't really have Firestar in the look she was wearing during that time. Uh, the US government sent a mole. Guess who that was? That was US Agent. So he definitely joined the team for a while as well. Characters like Thing were an ally of the West Coast Avengers. I'm not sure if they joined officially, but he was in a lot of the books. So I think he was a strong ally. And uh, that's not even all of them, but that is a lot of figures straight off my uh, display on the table. So you can create your own amalgamation, your own incarnation using which your favourite team is. So let me know in the comments below what is your favourite era of West Coast Avengers and who are the members of your team because you have plenty of options. And if you're going to have all those heroes then they obviously need some bad guys to fight. So here we have two West Coast Avengers villains. We've got Ultron and Grim Reaper. Here we have a couple of East Coast Avengers. It is of course Captain America and the brand new Black Widow. And then let's wrap up with some of the Who crew. We have Frogman, Jocasta and then the variant Tigra who I've still not decided what I'm going to do in the Who crew. Are they getting swapped out or are we keeping that one? Let me know in the comments but also leave a comment because Jocasta is reading them out from the previous Marvel Legend reviews. Leave one, she may pick you. Who have you picked today? Casey Smith says Great reviewed in W. I'm excited to add these ladies to my ranks. And then last but never least, we have Captain Britain, who has left Excalibur at home because we like this set. No one's getting whacked today. And then Hal, Fire, Hank. <laughs> Save it. So, final thoughts on this Marvel Legends West Coast Avengers box set. Five pack, if you will. It is an Amazon exclusive, and ultimately, that's the thing I don't like about this set. I don't like the price point. It's always priced too high, and it's lackluster with accessories. But the figures themselves are very nice, and there are some desirable ones in here. Mockingbird is desperately one we needed. Hank Pym in the jumpsuit is very nice. And also, Spider-Woman and Tigra are much more updates than I anticipated anticipated and then I don't mind another Iron Man but I've got Iron Man biased so overall I do think this is a solid set and if you are a West Coast Avengers fan you're going to need it to complete the team and to upgrade some of those characters you already have in your collection so ultimately the decision is yours but hopefully my review today helped you make your mind up whether you need it or not I for one I'm definitely going to add it to the collection I would like to upgrade the characters I already do have and I would like to add those missing pieces to my team especially that Mockingbird so will there be a single release down the line? Who knows? But I definitely think they can fix those sleeves at some point. You let me know in the comments what you think. But if you like Marvel Legends, and I guarantee you one thing, you're in the right place. Check out the videos tab, find the playlist. But most importantly, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Hit all on the notification bell. Don't miss out on a video. And please hit that join button. Become a channel member. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. You can also become a super producer or the Who Crew Deluxe for the live stream after show. But I will explain more on that very soon. Until then, follow me on Instagram at It's Dan Who. And I'm on Twitter or X, whatever it's called, at Dan Who Reviews. And I will, of course, see you on the next one. <laughs>